Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. These guys really think that uh, we are tards. <laughs> really. I mean, uh, they uh, invest in Ukraine uh, more than $100 billion for one year and a half. And they invested before the, what, February 24th, 2022. And after a year and a half of giving everything to Ukraine, starting from juveniles, juveniles to fighter jets, F-16s now, and Abrams tanks, logistics and coordination and strategy. And now they tell us, um, we're concerned with uh, Ukraine's corruption. <laughs> really? I mean, if you think they, they, that the Biden administration, the Americans, American intelligence, just found out, I don't know, a few days ago, or a month ago, that there's corruption, a big corruption in Ukraine, you gotta be, I don't know, haven't been around the block, not even halfway or something. Really. We knew that. They knew that. They said it. There were articles before the Russians intervened in Ukraine that Ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. It was on the 160-some uh, spot out of 195 or something. So it was at the bottom. It was... I mean, in terms of corruption, was at the top, if you put it this way. So let me show you how these guys are trying to turn it now and tell us that, hey, we're concerned with Ukraine's corruption. You gave them more than $113 billion, according to um, Josh Hawley, the Republican senator that I featured in one of my videos today and yesterday. $113 billion in one year and a half. And you tell me now, um, uh, we're, we're concerned with corruption. What do you think? You gave them weapons. You gave them logistics. You train them. You control them. And you tell me now that, uh, well, I think it's a little bit of corruption. Uh, between February 22, I'm sorry, February 24, 2022, and about a month ago, there was no corruption. <laughs> Before, yeah, corruption. Now, yeah, I think there's a little bit of uh, corruption there. So in one year and a half, there was no corruption, nothing. And in that year and a half, you gave those guys $113 billion. Do you think this, this is accidental? Of course not. They have a bigger fish to fry. Russia, and even bigger than that, the world. What are you talking about? They use these guys, man, just, uh, they use the Ukrainians as uh, you use the neighborhood's uh, bicycle. That term is used in other instances, but hey, I'm not going <laughs> to get into that. Let me show you this, this little article here from Fox News. Biden administration concerned ooh, mm, 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 over corruption in Ukraine, but still supports aid to combat Russia, memo states. And look at this garbage here. Move on. Anyway, uh, a recent U.S. State Department strategy memo detailing the top priorities for Ukraine ravaged, ravaged by war against Russia since last year shows that Biden administration has concerns over purported corruption in the Eastern European country, but still supports, supports continued aid to the region. According to the 22-page document called the In Integrated Countries Strategy, the, and I'm quoting, biggest challenge is winning the war, end quote. But Ukraine has a unique opportunity in the current moment to commit to the anti-corruption and the judicial reforms needed to realize the aspirations of the Ukrainian people, end quote. The document outlines several objectives and timelines for each that the U.S. government wants to see Ukraine reach. And they're going to tell us, you know, um, they're going to continue military and security assistance, but adds a clear, transparent strategy to the oligarch, the economy and deliver pro prosperity for all is central to these reforms. After a year and a half, $113 billion later, yeah, Thank you very much. It says that we, Ukraine cannot afford to push reforms to a post-war period. The country must lay the frame, framework to win the future, even now. All right, this is President Zelensky. You need to do that. 
It adds, Ukraine must move against entrenched politically influential interests to succeed now and in the post-war recovery. Reforms in the energy sector, a bastion of corruption and oligarchic control are essential to cementing Ukraine's European integration. If you don't destroy Russia, there will be no Ukraine to join anything. Read my lips, okay? China, okay? So you will not be able to, uh, to do anything if you don't destroy Russia. And they will not destroy Russia. As of now, I don't see any uh, signs that's happening. So talk about the integration, NATO, European Union, blah, blah, blah. That's not gonna happen. Now, you obviously have your own life. You, you know, went through school, I'm assuming you have a job, you have a family, you have friends, you have acquaintances, and the rest you have enemies. If you don't have, enemy, if you don't have enemies, that means you're not doing uh, certain things right. You should have enemies. Without enemies, that means that uh, you agree with everybody and you can't agree with everybody. So you have to have enemies. Um, now, I'm not saying you should look for them, but they will come as you do stuff. Like right now, for instance, doing this, I have more enemies than before. Why? Because some people don't like what I'm doing. Okay? That's natural. And I accept that. That's fine. Anyway, part of life. So you've been around the block a few times. You've been, you know, experiencing life. Now you tell me from what you maybe read, maybe you saw, maybe, you know, you interacted with people and you found stories and all that. How come it's possible that you have a corrupt government or, or organization, but the guy in charge doesn't know shit, doesn't know that he, he is clean as a whistle, as a crystal, but the, be, below him, everybody is corrupt, big corruption. Now, I personally don't believe that to happen, unless you have Jesus Christ and the 12 and blah, blah, blah. Then, first, Zelensky is not Jesus Christ. Got that? Got that. So to tell me that Ukraine is a corrupt country, but Zelensky will fix it, it's like you tell me that uh, Capone's, Al Capone's enterprise is a corrupt, you know, um, bad company, you know, but Capone is, is just, just, he's gonna take care of the corruption and his uh, uh, criminality or, I don't know, organized crime tendencies in his organizations. Are you crazy? He formed it. How do you think Zelensky got where he is? How do you think he got over there in a corrupt country? Look at your organization. If you work for someone else or you work for the government, look in that institution and see how you get the promotion. And when you get to see the promotion, you go above. You go above and look at your bosses. You rarely say, that is a competent boss. You find all kind of garbage and you think, not all of them, but you think, how in the hell? How in the hell? And then you hear the, the boss. The boss should be the, in a criminal organization, should be the biggest criminal. That's how he stays over there. Now, to tell me that in Ukraine is so corrupt, but somehow Zelensky is not corrupt? I mean, this is idiotic. It's idiotic. Um, so anyway, my friends, Everything is going to continue. This is just to tell us, you know, later, hey, we told you, we, we knew he's kind of corrupt, you know, but we still thought that we we're going to work because of the evil Russians. You know, we had to intervene. No, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, you supported this guy. Uh, <clears throat> he got elected with some support from some, some people. You supported 2014 uh, coup in Ukraine. You supported uh, the training of these guys and you close an eye to these oligarchs. And now you come and tell me that oh, I'm kind of like corrupt these guys. They have to start their uh, their um, reforms. Their reforms? Like Al Capone will reform or something? <laughs> you can't. My friends, movies, leave the movies away and idiots, ignorance and evil people. Let them away. Put them to the side. Just think how you experience life. There's some things that it can't, they can't happen. They tell you, hey, uh, this thing is good, but you experience in your life that is bad. Why would you believe those guys telling you that's a good thing when you experience it over and over and it's a bad thing? 
Who do you think those guys are? There are other people like you. How do you, how do you think they know that? By looking into life, by experiencing. The same you do, you have the same right, the same abilities. No, my friends, no, my friends, especially on the social issues and life in general. You have the same right as everybody else. When you say, well, I read 15 books. 15 books is 15 opinions of 15 people. Unless you have, I don't know, a study which you have other people that agree with, with themselves. I told you that little thing with a peer-reviewed college when I was required to make a paper on, with, only with peer-reviewed uh, uh, documentation. And I said, well, these guys are, are like um, dogs in heat. They all a group over there and fuck one another. This is what they are. If I bring something else that's not peer reviewed by the group, no, 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 that, that, no, 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 that challenges the status quo. All right, so I said, What is this? You want me to use these guys? What do you have against that one? It's not peer reviewed. Yeah, but is it wrong? Is it not true? It's not peer reviewed. You don't have the. If you have a PhD, you have to open your mouth. You're not going to put it here and say, I'm right about everything. I have a, I have a PhD, a degree in sociology. You don't have one in sociology. You cannot talk about social issues whatsoever because I have a degree in sociology. What? Maybe you didn't uh, study, but you read, I don't know, 3,000 books, more than a uh, PhD uh, holder ever. Maybe you know more than that person. Well, how do you determine he's smarter? Well, there's other things that, uh, yeah, those other things, I have them better than you. I mean, it's just, anyway, let's go back to these guys. Yes, they knew they were corrupt. They are corrupt. They will be corrupt. It's just a degree. And you gave the corrupt $113 billion at least. Congratulations from us without asking us. To the democratic uh, uh, system that we vote one time, four years, we just wait how you, our lives and our children's. Great. And future generations. And then you do what? Vote me out after you screw this country for the next, I don't know, five generations. Thank you very much. Anyway, stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.